Welcome to season three of A Cut Above the Rest, sponsored by Massey Ferguson. I'm Dr. Taylor Hendricks, and today I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about baleage production. Making sure that you have a consistent bale shape as you're going through the production process is very important. And it's something that a lot of times producers kind of overlook until they get to the actual wrapping process. If you're using an individual bale wrapper, you still wanna keep that consistent shape because it's going to make sure that that bale moves evenly through the wrapper and you have good coverage. But it's even more important in an inline wrapper system because you're gonna want those square edges of the bales to really line up next to one another. One of the problems that we're gonna see in an area like this is because there is a gap between the two bales that's gonna allow some oxygen to get in and really cause some problems with spoilage down the road because we're introducing some oxygen into what should be an anaerobic or oxygen-free environment. So it's very important to be sure as the bales are going through the baling chamber that they're a consistent size so that when you get to the wrapper, you don't run into these issues. As you go through and make that first bale, you can kind of see as that bale kicks out you know, are the edges pretty square? Does it have a slant? And, and make your adjustments from that first bale. And also laying that forage down in, in a very even windrow is gonna be important so that it's picking it up at an even rate as well. So a typical baleage bale is gonna be four foot by five foot, which is a, a regular big round bale. What's gonna change a little bit compared with dry hay is it's gonna be more variable um, in weight. So it might weigh 1,100 pounds, it might weigh 1,500 pounds, or even up to 1,600 pounds. And that's gonna depend a lot on the moisture and the density at which that bale is made. The impact of bale density is going to determine the fermentation of those bales and how um, much of the plant available sugars are converted into organic acids such as lactic and acetic acid and those acids are gonna determine how low the pH drops of the forage to prevent spoilage and promote intake of those animals. And then also fermentation is, is impacted by that density because anytime you can pack that forage closer together, it's going to help exclude the oxygen, which is very important in baleage because it is an anaerobic environment. We're wrapping that forage up and excluding all the oxygen to save it for later. The same as if you have a bag of salad in your fridge, you're going to try and bring all that oxygen out and clip it really tight so that it stays good for a longer period of time so you can come back to it and still have all that nutritional value in that food. So targeting a density of at least 11 pounds of dry matter per cubic foot is going to help with fermentation and get that oxygen out of those bales. From an equipment standpoint, as you're baling this product, to get that really high bale density, there's a couple of things that are really important to look for. The first is to make sure that you're using a baler that is equipped to baleage production. So either a baleage baler or a high moisture baler is very important and they'll be able to put a little bit more pressure to, to compact that forage a little bit better. Another equipment um, technology that's starting to come out is a pre-cutting system in some of the balers. And what that does is it almost has a set of knives that the forage is kind of dragged over as it goes through and is picked up out of the windrow. And that just chops the forage a little bit more. And that's gonna help, you know, the smaller the particle size, the more you can pack into a small space. It's gonna make it more efficient for the animals. There's gonna be less chewing, so those animals are gonna eat more before they get tired of eating and, and wanna stop. They're really able to take up as much forage as you're feeding them. So they'll have higher intakes generally, and higher intakes often lead to greater gains, which is something that we're always striving for. Including a microbial inoculant into baleage can be very beneficial in some scenarios. You can kind of think of it as giving yourself yogurt or probiotic. It's kind of us providing beneficial bacteria to that forage the same way as us taking a probiotic gives our gut good bacteria for good health. There are some inoculants that are very good at promoting that fermentation and the production of the acids and dropping that pH. Anytime that you can drop that pH and prevent spoilage, those animals are gonna eat more. Other inoculants are gonna be very important at the feed out stage and keeping that forage kind of stable. It's really something that we kind of consider as insurance. So if you are in a situation where you have to bale a little bit too dry or a little bit too wet, that's when you're gonna see the real benefits and preventing it from being lost in the field.
In summary, it's very important to make sure that our bales are consistent shape and size, and also making sure that our bales are very high density. So targeting a density of at least 11 pounds of dry matter per cubic foot is going to help with fermentation and feeding in the long run. Also using a pre-cutting system can be included to improve that forage density in those bales and also help with feeding efficiency later on. And then finally remembering that microbial inoculants can be used as insurance for our forage to promote stability and keep them from spoiling. Thanks again for watching. I hope you enjoyed learning some of these tips and tricks and stay tuned for the next episode from Dr. Dennis Hancock. We encourage you to work with your local extension agent and consider submitting a sample for your chance to win this year's Southeast Hay Contest. For more information, please visit www.sehaycontest.com.